And now for the other project, In Search of Darkness 90s. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us more about that? Yes, absolutely. Well, so we've done the In Search of Darkness uh, 80s trilogy. So In Search of Darkness Part 1, Part 2, Part 3, which amounts to about 14 plus hours of, uh, of, of exploration into one of the greatest decades of horror. Uh, the, the decade of the 90s uh, is, is one that is often overlooked. Uh, I think a lot of people focus so much on on the the movies and the icons and the iconography of the 80s that they say, well, 90s wasn't much going on until maybe Scream came along. But the thing is, if you're thinking that, look again. You know, yes. uh, it's not the lost decade or arguably it is the lost decade because people don't really give it the attention it deserves. But there's so much going on. Uh, what we've decided this time around is to divide the uh, documentary into two parts. So part one will be 1990 to 1994, part two, 95 to 1999. Uh, we are we are from October 6th through Halloween at midnight, the stroke of midnight. Uh, we are doing a pre-order campaign uh, for In Search of Darkness 1990 to 1994. And uh, much like the previous In Search of Darkness movies, this will go uh, year by year, 90 to 94, with, with uh, larger context chapters in between. Uh, we'll be sitting down with icons of the era uh, and um, and experts as well, talking about all of your favorite films. And uh, there are so many that are that are you know this this era it represented an amazing transition time for film and for filmmakers because Hollywood really was was sm- smelling the money coming from uh, 80s horror, but they didn't like the stigma of the label of the genre. So they started calling a lot of movies thrillers, even though they had horror elements or yes. straight horror. Um, and and with the influx of uh, all these psychological thrillers uh, and, and uh, erotic thrillers and all, you know, stuff like that, uh, there were new villains that were kind of like the the uh, the creepy neighbor next door that sort of took center stage. So you got movies like Silence of the Lambs, which which elevated. I, I'll use that that dreaded word, but it really was elevated horror because people didn't say, "Oh, that's not a that's a, that's not a horror film. That's a that's a thriller about serial killers." Well, gosh, you know, it's, it, there's there's a trail of bodies <laughs> and absolutely <laughs> frightening moments. If you don't want to call that horror, call it what you like. It deserves to be uh, discussed. Yeah, I actually met uh, Jonathan Demi at a convention and I was telling him, you know, how much of a great job he did with Silence of the Lambs. He was a very gracious guy. And um, yeah, it's unfortunate that he passed. But um, like I said, very good director, very humble. Very versatile as well. Uh, You know, for some people who don't know his oeuvre very well, um, you know, well, of course, Stop Making Sense is is sort of making a comeback currently on, uh, I think, IMAX screens. But uh, the Talking Heads concert film is really great. But uh, I, I always recommend um, Something Wild um, with uh, a young Ray Liotta and um, Melanie Griffith and Jeff Daniels. Uh, it, that's a movie that is absolutely deceptive because it kind of, it starts off as sort of this breezy, w- wacky, uh, romantic comedy, and it takes a very dark turn. And that's the that's the movie that put Ray Liotta on the map for me. I, I'll say no more about that. But uh, yeah. you know, in terms of '90s horror, there there was still a lot of '80s carryover with the the icons of the era. So you still yes. had. You know the 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 sequels uh, with you know with leather you got Leatherface you got Pinhead you've got um, uh, uh, Jason you've got Freddy you know there you've got Chucky they're all they're all there you even have you know the Tall Man from Phantasm you know in sequels you know and, and so on but they're sort of trying to you know make themselves either interesting in in the higher numbered sequels or. They're trying, you know, like for Freddy Krueger, for example, with with you know, he died in in Freddy's Dead, arguably, but returns <laughs> yes. in New Nightmare with with Wes Craven getting very meta, you know. But Wes Craven's, you know, he's at the at, at peak form uh, in the early '90s. He's doing like the People Under the Stairs as well, um, and so he's turning Urban Blight into a, a very entertaining uh, socio political commentary movie that is just uh, outrageous at the same time. Um, 
but you, you you know you there all these these icons of the era are also stepping aside for brand new villains you know pennywise uh you know in stephen king's it as a miniseries on tv you've got Candyman, you know yes. you've, got, you've got you've got uh you know tony todd is just killing it uh as a as a brand new again with the sort of the urban blight uh as a theme you know um but you also have like annie wilkes you know in misery um plenty of stephen king to chew on as well but you got Hannibal Lecter and Buffalo Bill. Um, they, they, filmmakers were really doing their best to to create all new villains for us to root for and to create franchises around, or at least to rate, make an absolute impact. Um, I mean, I could just go on and on and on. There's just so oh, much in, in this decade that people don't even think about. I mean, this is this is the time when uh, A-listers were all chomping at the bit to be on. I'm using that word a lot, chomping at the bit. It's still. No, that's fine. Um, that's fine. <laughs> but they uh they they were chomping at the bit to to be in 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 the horror and chew up scenery. So you got like uh you know uh, Francis Ford Coppola is like you know enough of this slasher stuff. I'm making Dracula, Bram Stoker's Dracula, and and, and uh, Anthony Hopkins chewing up the scenery. Gary Oldman as as absolutely memorable and in, in multiple forms as Dracula. You got Keanu Reeves. You got Winona Ryder. Uh, it, it's amazing, you know, then uh, because that's, you know, the, sort of the literary take, quote unquote, on Dracula. Next thing you know, you've got Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, you know, Kenneth Branagh and Helena Bonham Bob Carter. De Niro as De Niro was the monster, right? It's like insane. You've got Jack Nicholson. He's like, I'll do a Wolfman movie. You know, he recruits Mike Nichols and he does Wolf, Wolf you know, yes. with Michelle Pfeiffer and James Spader. Um, you know, it's sort of back to basics with A-listers. You know, Tom Cruise is like, hey, what about me? Let's do, uh, I'll play a vampire in an uh, interview with a vampire, you know? Oh, let's yeah, get, that's uh, one of my wife's favorite um, films. Yeah, let's get a hot Brad Pitt, a hot Antonio Banderas, a hot uh, uh, Tom Cruise. They all have long hair and they look like fashion models and they drink. <laughs> what, what more do you need? <laughs> yeah, but also, yeah, in the 90s had some high high concept ideas as well uh like paul w anderson's event horizon which is arguably his best film yeah 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 uh and even, go, ahead. go ahead go ahead now in, in even um certain comic book adaptations uh like the crow and uh mm-hmm. blade which is definitely one of my favorites um was that little hybrid of I'm not going to necessarily say that the superheroes, but comic book characters in a horror setting or. Oh, yeah, you could talk about Spawn as well, you know. Uh, uh, Spawn, and, <laughs> the yeah. less said about Spawn, the, well, the TV series was excellent. It was Chef's Kiss. But uh, my friends and I, when we went to see it in the theater, <laughs> we both fell asleep. Oh, you, you, you didn't buy it. You didn't buy it. Well, it, it is notorious for uh, lots of CGI effects before they were quite ready. That's another element of all the 90s. Now, we're talking about the, the ones we just mentioned. Those are all uh, mid to late 90s. So we will get to that kind of stuff. Uh, Eventually but, down the, you know, part yeah, of the last with, segment of the trilogy. Yeah, well, with, well, with part two, because remember, we're doing part one and part two. Yeah. So, um, but uh, a- another element that is interesting about this whole era is that, you know, practical effects were at their zenith, but you have the introduction of CGI becoming more and more prevalent and cheaper and cheaper and filmmakers all want to use it. And, you know, coming off of, of morphing from T2 and and the abyss to uh, the, the dinosaurs of Jurassic Park, uh, all producers said, oh, God, now you could do anything you want. Let's just do that. And they didn't realize that practical effects still played a tremendous role in, in selling the illusion. And so you had some really janky early CGI uh, baby steps uh, in the 90s, especially in the first half. Yes. Um and Hellraiser, like Hellraiser 3 was using it, you know, the trickster appearing in uh, Brain Scan, you know, Lawnmower Man and, and doing, you know, virtual reality, uh, 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 you know, themes in, in the story. It had nothing to, nothing to do with the actual Stephen King short story from Night Shift, but it's all there. And so it's kind of, you know, yes, it's bad CGI, but when you look back at that era, it's actually got a bit of a nostalgia 
uh, nostalgic element to it. At least it does for me, because I, I really dismissed a lot of it back in the day. But now when I come back, it's kind of comforting to see that they were trying to push the envelope uh, with effects back then, even if it didn't quite work. And it really does sort of place these movies very smack dab in the early 90s and the mid 90s with the stuff we're talking about. You know, who can forget the Langoliers munching on uh, airplane wings and they looked like... Uh, <laughs> Really bad, really bad, you know, CGI Pac-Man, you know, um, <laughs> but I digress. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to the coverage of Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth, which is one of my top guilty pleasures. Uh, back then, a lot of people wrote it off. They said, oh, you know, Pinhead goes Hollywood. He's the new Freddy Krueger with the, you know, the banter or one-liners. But I thought it was, you know, Doug Bradley looked like he was having so much fun. Oh, yeah. When he, um, you know, just became this more, how should I say, uh, lifelike as Pinhead, you know, he smashes the pulpit and then does this pose like, I am the way. <laughs> <laughs> I bought it. I bought it. Yeah, it, it, something was very majestic about that, you know, especially with his theme playing in the background mm -hmm. and um, even the part where he uh, tricked Joey Summerskill, <laughs> like she thought it was her father, like apparition of a father coming back to life. <laughs> he takes the box, she gives him the box and he's laughing and she's like, you, you know, invaded my mind or something like that. Mm -hmm. And he says, <laughs> save your tears. <laughs> Right, <laughs> it's good, such good stuff. I don't know. I it's really it. fun. Terry Farrell is great in that movie too. You know, I liked her as, as a, our our Sorry. heroine. You know, um, it, it's and let's not forget, you know, some of the new folks as well. You know, Leprechaun makes his appearance. Um, it, it there's so much going on. Uh, uh, there you have to remember also that there's all the straight to to video stuff. Uh, you know, from Full Moon, you know, Full Moon Entertainment, you got the Puppet Master franchise is going Charles strong. Charles Band. Yeah, Charles Band, you know, demonic toys and um, uh, subspecies and, you know, the, more Stuart Gordon stuff. You know, he put out, you know, Pit in the Pendulum with, with Lance Henriksen and Jeffrey Combs in it. And um, it, there's just a lot of stuff that we forget, you know, uh, a lot of the straight to video stuff. They, they tried to create, you know, I don't know why they only did one, but Dr. Giggles is a favorite of many. <laughs> Ah, yeah, my girlfriend at Wait, the time. Watched you know, that. Ironically, you got the two L.A. Law guys. You got Larry Drake, and then you've got uh, Corbin Bernson later as the dentist. What's the connection? What conversation did we have? <laughs> well, yeah. You got to carry the mantle. I can't do another one of these things. Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, God bless Larry Drake. Um, um, yeah, he was great in the uh, the first uh, Darkman movie, and right. then they, they brought him back. Which didn't make sense because I guess when he blew up in the helicopter, but hey. Well, listen, it's creative writing. Sometimes you don't care because you're <laughs> I, I'll be the first to say, you know, they killed Freddie in the last one. I'm glad he's back in the. You, you don't care how yeah. they just how they make it happen. They just make it happen, you know. Listen, they killed Bond in the last one. He's going to just re reappear in, in a form of another human. <laughs> you know, uh, it doesn't matter if you want it, you want it, you know. That's true. That's definitely true. <laughs> but um, is it? it's too late for the fan consultation for uh, In Search of Darkness 90, is it? Yeah, you know, it's not too late. We still have it up, uh, I believe, if you go to 90s Horror Doc. You know, actually, by the time that this is going... I don't think you'll be able to get to it. But we did have this really cool fan consultation where you could fill out a survey and you could share the films that you'd love to see in In Search of Darkness, 1990 to 1994. And um, um, I take all that stuff to heart. It's very helpful to me because when you make these movies, you're really kind of in a vacuum. And there's so many choices that, you know, like you with, with Transformers, at a certain point, I've got to choose between one and another title uh competing for the limited space i have in a year and uh sophie's what, choice well what helps me make these these th this that sophie's choice when i choose between the children 
you know, <laughs> if I have to choose between Child's Play 2 and Child's Play 3, you know, if if the chorus is saying Child's Play 2 is much better than 3, you know, you don't even know, uh, that is very helpful to me in terms of perception of these things. And so when people say, I'd love to see this obscure film or, you know, you, how, you know, you, you can't make this movie without putting In the Mouth of Madness by John Carpenter, you know, these are things that are important for me to uh, to help shape the uh, trajectory of the film. Nice. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll sort of end by plugging the stuff, you know, the In Search of Tomorrow book. Uh, go to uh, 80sscifibook.com. You have uh, pre-orders go until Christmas Day. Uh, and then In Search of Darkness, 1990 to 1994, go to uh, 90shorrordoc.com. And all our socials are, uh, it's still 80s horror doc on, you know, Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and stuff. We've, we've built up a nice audience there, so we just didn't want to just change the channel there. But uh, it's all the 90s stuff that's on there. And, um, you know, I, I still have my site. It came from blog.com, and you can follow me on socials. Gosh, you know, Twitter, I'm, I'm holding out as long as I can. But if I... Uh, oh, yeah, I got that message that you all uh, that post that you did that yeah post. just um, you know listen if elon goes through on his uh not so wise choice to create you know to charge mm -hmm. uh, a subscription rate just not for an elevated use but just a basic use of twitter uh, I, I i'm not there for that so unfortunately that that will be moving on you know but i'm still there as much as i can and want to be you know for it came from blog and tiki at peak at it came from blog and uh tiki ambassador on, on twitter and instagram and i i just jumped onto blue sky uh about cool go to see what that's like i i couldn't get in through the doorway but uh when elon mentioned that he's like gonna charge to use basic twitter somehow there was a mass exodus and i was able to jump on the boat <laughs> yeah yeah i mean this guy uh, don't get me started he's whew. No you comment. Think he's no Tony comment. Stark, but he's not Tony Stark. Yeah, uh, no comment. Uh, I'm trying yes. to be, try to be apolitical about my yes. persona here, but you know he's not making it easy. That's all I can say. Uh, no. Oh no. I expected uh, Twitter to implode down the line. So yeah, we'll, we'll see. see. I but think. In the meantime, I think we have fun. It, You're also available. You mentioned Threads, right? Yeah, I'm on threads as yeah. well. I, I mean, I'm I'm like a social media nomad now. You know, it's just like I'm bouncing. I'm on threads. Uh, I think threads. It's David Weiner, uh, not Tiki Ambassador. But uh, and and Blue Sky. I'm David Weiner and not Tiki Ambassador. But I'm Tiki Ambassador on Twitter, and it came from blog. You know, on the other stuff, it's like it gets more complicated. It's like, you know, having to remember a password that you're constantly changing. You know, it's just like I think if you want to find me, you can uh, if you yes. look enough, you know, one will point you to another when it comes. And, down to and I also highly recommend it came from blog, your blog site. Great stuff. Great interviews. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, sorry if I sound weary about social media, but it's like. You know, I tried post, I jumped onto Blue Sky, there's threads, you know, I'm still on Twitter because I, it's so easy to use, but there's Instagram, there's TikTok, you know, at a certain point, I, I've always wanted to keep it simple where I just want to use one thing, you know, but unfortunately you can't quite really do that. So you really have no. to kind of all over the map. No, unfortunately not. You know, there is no uh, one-stop shop or all-in-one uh, option nowadays. Used to be, used to be. Yes, yes. But uh, D, it's definitely been a pleasure, my brother. And um, wow, had a lot of fun. Um, and I highly recommend anyone that's listening to pre-order the In Search of Tomorrow book, as well as the upcoming In Search of Darkness 90s, 1990 to 1994. Awesome. 80shardoc.com and 90s hardoc dot com and 80s sci fi dot com <laughs> sci fi book. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. 80, 80s sci fi book dot com and what? 90s horror doc dot com. Yes. Well, I, I'll make sure that I'll add the text. So. Awesome. All right, Dave, you take care of yourself, my friend. Likewise. Uh, always a pleasure. <laughs>